Of all the problems facing the United States right now, none are more important than health care. Tuesday morning, um, arrested a uh, Hollywood doctor, a Miami-Dade clinic owner, and some 28 others in a $40 million Medicare fraud scam involving fraudulent billing. Medicare for fraud, estimated now to total about $60 billion a year, has become one of, if not the most profitable crimes in America. Is the Medicare fraud business bigger than the drug business in Miami now? I think it's way bigger. They have found a way in which they have been able to get pretty substantial amounts of money with not a huge amount of effort, and at least until now, without the possibility of uh, great detection. Stolen money isn't taken from Medicare patient bank accounts, but from Medicare accounts. So you might wonder who the victim is. It's actually all of us, because we're all paying for uh, Medicare. Uh, they take money out of our checks every two weeks to pay for it. So in that sense, we're all, uh, all a victim. The largest health care fraud settlement in history. Overbilling Medicare, kickbacks, falsified procedures. Scott's former company was forced to pay $1.7 billion in penalties. Medicare scammers are using the names of dead doctors, thousands of them, to rip off millions of dollars, somewhere in the range of 76 to 92 million dollars in phony claims for medical devices like wheelchairs and oxygen equipment. Now remember, it's your money, your tax dollars. Even worse, the government has known about this since 2001. Mary Jerome's fight against ovarian cancer started three years ago. When she sought care at a hospital outside her insurance network, she had to take on her insurance company. It's hard enough to get the courage to fight the cancer and then to be thrown back into a deep despair of thinking that your financial world has collapsed. She was stuck paying $46,000 for treatment her insurance company wouldn't cover. I was aghast when I started getting the bills, uh, and it took me a while to figure out what was going on. Here's what's going on. Insurance companies determine reimbursement for out-of-network care based on what's called usual, customary, and reasonable rates, or UCR. Those rates are determined by a firm called Ingenix. It turns out Ingenix is owned by United Health Group, one of America's biggest insurance providers. Thank you. Today, New York State Attorney General Andrew Cuomo called it a conflict of interest that lowballs a medical provider's average fee by as much as 28 percent, forcing patients to make up the difference. I believe all these companies that have been involved with Ingenix, uh, that there's a very strong case that they were perpetrating consumer frauds. In a decision with national implication, United Health agreed to pay $50 million to establish an independent rating agency and shut down Ingenix. We regret that conflicts of interest were inherent in these Ingenix database products. Will patients ever get any of their money back from the insurance companies? Yes, yes. We said today is the first step. I believe consumers are entitled to hundreds of millions of dollars in reimbursement. Now, Mary Jerome doesn't expect to get any money back herself. She hopes her fight makes a difference for others. Randall Pinkston, CBS News, New York. By 2013, annual health care costs will surpass $3 trillion. Losses from fraud and abuse will reach up to $300 billion. That's a loss of $820 million every day. That's 566,000 every minute. Fraud stops here. Fraud stops now.